Good morning, SMP Nation. Welcome to a new episode of Takeover Tuesday. How are all of you guys today? I want to know. Fill me in. How was your guys' weekend? Give me everything. Let me see. Debbie Shaw, good morning. Hi, how are you? Kathy, Lo- is it Lovell? Good morning. She's watching from Southern Virginia today. That is exciting. Um, Desiree Kumpf, good morning. Oh my gosh, all my friends are here. Barbara Jones. Let me see. I'm trying to scroll through all your comments. First off, I just want to say I love how you guys have conversations before we go on and before I start the show. I love that you guys are talking about your day and your week and new things that are going on in your life. I love it. it. Makes me so happy. Lynn Shepherd, good morning. Jackie Beatty, all of you guys are here, and it is a good day today. 
It's actually, it's a little cloudy over here in California. I think we're getting a little bit more rain today. So I think today and throughout this week, but let me tell you, I got to fill you in a little bit. So my weekend, I have recently taken up the hobby of paddleboarding. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm not an athletic person whatsoever, but paddleboarding is a good way to get me out and exercising without thinking that I'm exercising, you know. But I took um, my dog Winston with me on the paddleboard and we just sat and it went around the lagoon that I was at. It was so much fun. And now I think I need, I need some... I think I need a new bag or something. I'll have to make one to take all with me, but I need one that's water resistant material because every time I go, my towels get my bag wet, everything like that. So I need to find a good material that's waterproof that I can take with me to the beach. That's that's my new goal to find and make myself a bag. <laughs> so that is what's going on with me and what's been going on this weekend, but I'm excited. It's a new week. We have so much new stuff going on and it's just it's gonna be a good week I feel it I feel it um so let's see Ann Philbeck said she cut two acres of grass this morning what Kyle just said whoa <laughs> he said, that's a lot of grass that is crazy and you made two t-shirt quilts this week and I need your motivation you gotta you gotta help me out give me some tips <laughs> Lisa asked if my dog had a life jacket. Yes, he does. I actually, I'm going to pull up a picture for you. I should have loaded it so you guys could see it. But here's a little look. There's his little life jacket. <laughs> I promise I'll stop talking about my dog at some point. I'm just still, I'm still so obsessed with him. But he was so good. I was terrified that he was going to jump off into the water or, you know, not like the water at all. But he, he, in fact, he was trying to bite the fish that were in the water as we were riding along in the water. So he did fine. He did fine. We're good. <laughs> but let's talk about what we are doing today. Now, I am so excited. I've been excited for this show for the past couple weeks, actually. We have the one, the only Joanne Baco here in the house to teach us all about thread painting and some of her techniques that she uses um, to create some beautiful thread painting work. Because I don't know if you saw in the picture, maybe you saw the posts on Facebook where I was talking about her coming on the show, but I showed the little sample of the pillow that she's going to be showing us today and talking about. And it's just, it's adorable. And the technique that she has, it just adds such a fun you know, texture and look to your project. So I, she mentioned it as an idea and I was like, this is the one I need. We need a show on this because we've never done something like this before. And it's great. I love finding new techniques that even I can try because I'm always trying to find new things and new ways to, I don't know. And widen my learning and widening my skills, widening my skills. <laughs> So I'm very excited. But before we get too deep into it, I just want to let you know of a few things going on here at SMP that is really exciting. Now, with May, what what holidays in May? Mother's Day. And of course, I'm we're very excited for Mother's Day. And hopefully the April showers that we just had will bring some May flowers to California and some sunny weather. So I'm I'm hoping, hoping for that. And wherever you guys are too, hoping for some sunshine and some nice weather for you too. Um, but with Mother's Day, we have a really exciting Mother's Day sale going on. So if you want to know about that or you want to know more um, or need any more details on that, sign up for our emails because we will give you all the info that you need and show you some of the awesome things that are on sale. So if you're looking for maybe an upgrade or maybe some things to stock up on, Sign up for some emails and we can get you all of that. Huh, Roger? Because yes, Roger's sir. the man behind the, the man behind the emails. <laughs> so, yes, that is good. And also, if you didn't want to sign up for emails, go to our social media. And also, you can just browse on our website. And um, we are posting all of the info on there as well. So, lots of ways to get connected with SMP. But another really fun way to get connected is through our Facebook group. Now, if you don't have Facebook, that is totally okay. But we do have a private Facebook group with almost 900 members, I think, which is crazy. Just absolutely wild. And it makes me so happy that so many of you guys have joined. Um, but if you are not involved in that, join our Facebook group. The link is right down in the description. 
and you can know more things about SP, some more behind the scenes stuff. And it's also become such a positive community for all of you guys to share your projects and share your ideas. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely join in and you will have fun. I promise. Okay. Well, with this, we have got Joanne Banco in the house ready for today and today's segment. But I just wanted to let you know really quickly that if you, after today's show, were interested in learning more from Joanne or doing any more stuff with Joanne, definitely look down in the description box because we have links to her YouTube, her Facebook, her website, and an extra little special something in the description box that we will talk about when she comes on that you guys can download today and learn how to make. So with all that, I'm so excited to bring her on. So let's go ahead and talk with Joanne. Joanne, hi! Hello, hello, Kennedy. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited that you're here. And um, I just, I can't wait. I I'm cannot wait. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling yes. it. <laughs> so Joanne when we were talking about having you on the show when you brought up thread painting I got really excited because I feel like thread painting is something that some people might be intimidated by because you know it, it some people might think it's very um advanced or you know something that's not in their level but I think you can show us how we can all do it right it's the exact opposite believe it or not it is one oh, of the yeah. easiest most foolproof things you can possibly do. It's hard to go wrong. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. And of course, you're here to teach it. So this couldn't be a better episode. So I will go ahead and just let you take it away. And okay. I will be behind the scenes. If you guys have any questions at all, just drop a comment down below and I will get to it. But Joanne, I am so excited to learn from you. I've got my notebook ready for you. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> Oh my. Hey, everybody. It's so good to see you all from all over the place. Uh, it's all, always interesting to hear what your uh, weather is here and there. Um, I'm in Northeast Ohio, and believe it or not, uh, during the night we had snow. It's uh, pretty much gone by now, but that was, that was something shocking to look out the window in the middle of the night and see snow out there. But anyway, I always like to say, the sun always shines in your sewing space because all you do is turn on those lights and you've got sunshine. And when you are sewing, you've got happiness and happiness equals sunshine and sunshine equals happiness. And it all wraps up together to make it a great day. So I really appreciate everybody being here today. I know there's a whole lot going on online and for you to take your time to be here um, means uh, the world to me. So thank you for being here. I think you're going to enjoy this. Um, uh, I will wonder if you've got any, um, you know, questions or comments. I won't be able to see them very well while I'm uh, talking or showing on the machine. So hang on to those and we will catch those uh, later. And, you know, if you always, if you ever miss, you can always get a hold of me. Just find me at letsgosew.com. I'm always, always happy to help and fill in the blanks and answer any questions that maybe get get missed. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and show you the actual pillow. Okay. And just like Kennedy said, uh, this is what you saw featured in the uh, advertisements for this particular show. And I'm going to be showing you how I thread painted the birds and go through all of that process and, and how I applied them to the pillow top. But if you'd like to learn how to make the pillow itself, that's where I have the extra instructions for you that you can download so that you can see step-by-step step how I constructed this pillow from scratch. And again, not, you know, not a difficult project at all. Um, something anyone, anyone can do. All you need is a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch to complete this project. But um, hopefully you can kind of get um, a little bit of an idea of my technique here, one of which is... I made stuffed birds. So this is what we like to call a trapunto effect. So I'm going to show you how I did that as well as the, the thread painting. And then just take a little note of what I did here with that trim. That's just another little uh, tip and a trick for you. I do. I love making pillows. I have so many pillows stashed in my house and my uh, sample stash. I could do a whole 
whole program just on pillow show and tell. But one of the things I always like to do is try to tie the color scheme together. So, um, you know, that can be tricky. And and I know some of you are, are quilters and you're really, really, really good at that color thing. But I have to tell you, as a garment sewer, that has always been a challenge for me because garment sewers want everything to match and to match perfectly. And what that means is sometimes you lose the technique of using some contrast and something that makes uh, makes it you know pop on the fabric. So with embroidery and with um, this technique with thread painting and applique is what what this you know combines. Um, you kind of want to you know go a little bit uh, on the on the on the fringes and think of some things that are going to make that particular uh, featured item pop on the fabric. So obviously I chose a a relatively neutral background, but it also picks up a little bit of the colors that you see in some of the, the bird motifs. So that's one tip. If you're adding two fabrics together, um, just, you know, they don't have to match perfectly, but try to find something that marries them together and kind of links the two together. And so I did that. Yeah, <laughs> go on the wild side. Sometimes that's good. Um, you know, you have to do it to your own personal taste as well. So if you like a more monochromatic, a more subtle, a more subdued look, go for it. If you like, you know, the the, the shocking <laughs> look of some things, then go for that as well. It's all up to you. And then you can see what I did here is I just took a little bit of extra fabric as a trim and used it just as a narrow band, kind of as a, a piping substitute, just to give again that that whole idea of tying the color scheme together. And then it's just got a simple, um, we call that envelope back. Um, you can see threads from my previous project. I was sewing on red yesterday, <laughs> but um, just a very simple overlap. And then I actually made my own pillow for this because uh, sometimes, you know, you have an idea of a pillow size that you want to make and you can't always find a pillow form to match. But I'll give you just another little tip on pillow forms. If you do find one that matches your size or you make your pillow to match your pillow form, what I like to do with pillow forms is I like to um, buy a pillow form and then make my actual pillow an inch smaller so that when I'm stuffing that pillow, it's overstuffed already. Now, I know there's an opposite end of that, too. Some people like the um, the got hair that's driving me crazy here. Um some people like the effect of having the uh, what they like to call the karate chop pillows where they are understuffed. And then you just you literally you take your hand and you do a, a karate chop in the middle. How many of you have seen those? And they have that that permanent kind of dent in them. If you like that, then you want them understuffed. But I like my pillows to be really, really full and lush. So, again, the way I do that is I either make my pillow form or buy a pillow form that is um, going to be one inch smaller than what I actually make my, my um, uh, or one inch larger, rather. My pillow top is going to be one inch smaller than my pillow form. And the next tip for you on pillows is when you go to shop for pillow forms, if at all possible, try to find the ones that have a zipper in them. Because if you have a zipper in them, then you can fill out the stuffing in particularly those four corners where I don't think pillow forms are ever uh, stuffed enough. <laughs> it's a little hard to say, but they're never quite stuffed enough for my taste. So if you get the ones with the zipper, then you can add extra stuffing to your pillow and really fill out that corner. And uh, each one of those corners, I find myself putting a lot more stuffing or also known as fiber fill inside my pillow. And I'm going to show you some fiber fill um, that is my favorite in, in just a minute here. Okay. So that is the actual um, project itself. Now let's talk about what you can use for your thread painting. Really the sky's the limit. However, I generally prefer fabric that is a home decor weight fabric. So um, this type of fabric is, you know, readily available. You find lots and lots and lots of possibilities. And just look for something with a motif that you can enhance or you can actually separate into um, appliques. You don't have to cut it out. 
um, if you want to, you can use, um, you know, a regular, let's see, I got another piece here to show you, a regular home decor fabric and just thread paint directly on there. So I'll bring that a little closer and you see I've just done a little bit of accents to those leaves. So home decor fabric, I think is really perfect for this. You might be lucky enough to find sample pieces. A lot of times uh, stores are trying to get rid of those kinds of things and they're like perfect little, little squares and they're ideal for doing this. Now, if you look at what I did here, you can see that I just did a little bit of subtle thread painting. Obviously, I haven't, you know, finished this and done the flowers or anything like that yet. But that's just, again, a matter of your personal choice. You can go crazy with thread painting and you can literally fill in virtually every space that is printed on a piece of fabric. Or you could just use it to do um, some highlighting. So, again totally up to you. I'm going to do just kind of a little bit of highlighting today, and then you can go further with that if you if you want to. All right. So what else could we think about using? Well, again, if you are a quilter, you are probably very familiar with panels. I'll just hold up part of this panel I found in a, in a quilt shop. And, you know, panels a lot of times have both large and small motifs. I know you're curious, so I'll open this up. Let you see a little bit more of it. But when I look at this and I look at those those flowers that are surrounding that um, beehive, I think they would really benefit from some additional thread painting on top of there. So again, this would be very similar to if you were doing it on home decor fabric. However, let's talk about the prep. Before we move over to the machine and actually do some stitching, let's talk about um, prep for that. So if I'm prepping a home decor fabric like this or like my bird print, I am simply going to use tearaway stabilizer. Find my tearaway here. And you can find the Stay Perfect brand on the uh, Sewing Machines Plus website. This is just, you know, your standard kind of crisp tearaway that we use for embroidery. And I'm just going to simply put that on the back as I'm stitching to give me a little bit of extra support and a little bit of extra body. The fabric itself, because it's home decor weight, has already got a little bit more substance. So I just put that layer underneath there. And when I was done, I would just simply tear all of that away and I'd just be left with the bits and pieces that are underneath the stitching which are you know of no importance whatsoever. So that will absolutely work. Uh, another option and some um, an option that I would very likely use if I was doing something on a panel print like this, I would go ahead and I would use a fusible what we call a craft fleece and this is just a thin, batting type material with um, fusible on one side. It's not very thick, but when you fuse it to the back of this, you could fuse it to the whole panel and not have to worry about it really adding up too much um, uh, uh, thickness to it or, or bulk to it. That was a word I was looking for, but it's it's thin enough and, and yet it gives your fabric support while you're doing that decorative stitching. If you want to, you can also add tearaway underneath and then remove the tearaway when you're done. But your whole piece that you would fuse to your entire panel would be um, stay, staying there. And then you could go ahead and add another whole layer of your regular batting if you chose then to go ahead and quilt that. So you that's just, you know, that would be in addition to your thread painting. Then you would be doing your actual quilting. So that's another little um, little idea for you and a little way for you to do that. All right, what else do I have to show you here? Let's talk about prep for the actual appliques, like what I did with these um, birds. And you'll see you'll see me do a bird in just a minute here. But when I'm doing it as an applique, and I'm actually cutting the motif out of my fabric. Pick up my piece here. All right, so I've actually just um, 
uh, taken the fabric and I've isolated a motif that I want to thread paint and then turn into an applique. When I use this method, I do one additional thing. I will take and fuse a piece of interfacing. I know it's a little hard to see because it's white, but I'll fuse a piece of interfacing to the back of that fabric. And then when I go to actually do my thread painting, I will layer a piece of tear away. So what kind of stabilizer or interfacing do I like to use for that? I simply go to the, you know, the, the department that you find where you find your interfacing and try to find whatever it would be that you would use to interface shirt collars because that in my estimation is the perfect 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 weight it's like goldilocks porridge it's not too not too hot not too, not too thin not too thick not too soft not too stiff it's just just right and it does give a nice um, crisp finish to that uh, fabric again without adding too much bulk or too much weight and then that will stay there during the life of the um, actual applique piece so that's again how I like to um, prep that all right so we talked about all of that let's talk about the um, pillow front itself just for a second because I showed you my favorite uh, fleece there I need, I need uh, six more hands to show you all this. So my favorite um, fusible craft fleece. Another little tip for you for your pillows. I like to fuse this same fleece to the wrong side of my pillow top fabric. So I'm going to be stitching the bird and then applying it to this as if it was my pillow front. And when I do pillow fronts, I like to... Um, take this and fuse that whole piece with the fusible fleece and that way it just gives a little bit of a, a, a smoother finish in particular once you get your pillow stuffed and you get that pillow in there it keeps you from seeing any of the the, the wrinkles that might occur from the actual pillow form so it just smooths everything out so as you can see I'm a big fan of this um fusible uh, craft fleece. I'm sure you can find this at um, Sewing Machines Plus. All right. Um, last but not least, I talked about stuffing and you're going to see me actually do the trapunto effect and give those birds a little bit of, of stuffing. And you heard me talk about uh, uh, overstuffing my pillows. Now there's fiber fill and there's fiber fill and there's all, you know, different brands and different types of packages. I have one that I have discovered that I use regularly and I have like literally ditched every other kind. And uh, I'm not going to give you a brand name because again, you go to Sewing Machines Plus and, and, um, and see what they have there. But the actual type is called cluster stuffing. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. Do you see how it's little, almost like clumps of fiber fill? They are not meant to be separated. When I use regular fiber fill, I find myself tearing at it and shredding it and trying to get it fluffy and then trying to use it for, for stuffing. But if you use this cluster type, it's just already perfectly formed for stuffing anything. So just look for the word cluster and look for these little, um, you know, fluffy little, almost like mini, mini, mini um, little pillows and uh, they will make your stuffing so, so, so much better. All right. I think I only have one more thing to show you, and then we're going to move over to the machine. So last but not least, let's talk about um, needles, thread, and presser feet. We are doing thread painting, which means we are stitching free motion, and we are stitching free motion without any restrictions, really without any rules, and without any particular uh, design that's kind of corralling us in. So unlike free motion quilting, which I know some of you are experts at, um, I am not. I am, I, I am stipple challenged and I love my embroidery capability for doing that um, because I am not very good at doing that free motion work by myself. 
Um, I used to think uh, badly of myself because I couldn't quite get the hang of it. And then I think I, I kind of realized that after my many years of garment sewing and with so much precision sewing, you know, forward, backward a little bit, but mostly forward, some pivoting and, you know, being really intricate. I find that I have a hard time like swirling backwards and then swirling back forward. So I've kind of given up on free motion uh, quilting, but free motion thread painting, oh, it is so easy and it's a great beginner technique. So if you or anyone you know is looking to do some embellishment and you want to do it with simple stitches and, and a simple machine, you can do it like I'm going to show you today. You do not need anything fancy. Okay. All right. So what kind of presser foot do we need for that though? We need a free motion presser foot. So I am talking about a foot that is spring loaded. And that means when the needle goes down, the, the foot goes up. When the foot goes down, the needle is up so that you can move that around. And these are also known as a darning foot. So this would be AKA free motion foot, darning foot. They come in open toe, they come in closed toe. If you have one already that came with your machine, go ahead and try it out. I kind of prefer the, the standard, ordinary, kind of vanilla flavored, which is very easy to find and available for, again, every machine out there, um, standard darning foot. And this would have been used for darning holes, which is very similar to what we're doing with um, with thread painting. But I just, I like this one. I like the, the little bit of extra um, uh, pressure that it gives me with the full foot. And yet it's clear so I can still see what I'm doing. These also come in an open toe version. So again, um, you know, use whatever you have at first and see how you like it and then see if you want to uh, switch to something else. However, make sure that you do not confuse. Very important. And I've seen this happen. Do not confuse your embroidery foot with your free motion foot. They can look a little bit similar but you do not want to use your embroidery foot for free motion stitching. And you do not want to use your free motion foot for embroidery stitching. It is not um, designed for your machine to do embroidery with this type of foot. So when you are done with your thread painting, if you have this foot on, don't forget to take it off if you have embroidery before you get back to wanting to do embroidery and switch to your embroidery foot. Okay, very, very, very important. And then needles, I'm going to use a standard embroidery needle. I'm going to use that for two reasons. Um, number one, I'm using embroidery thread. And so that, and I'm doing an embroidery technique, number two. So uh, an embroidery needle is designed for embroidery threads and has a little bit of a larger eye. And it's a little bit more forgiving when you're doing that, um, that fast um, stitching. And then in the bobbin, I'm going to grab what I got here because I already got one on my machine. In the bobbin, I'm going to be using bobbin thread. And most of you know, I am a brother ambassador. So I'm using um, brother products today. Um, I love these little clips that you can get from brother to put around your uh, bobbins to keep your uh, thread from, from rolling off. But the other thing you want to pay attention to is the right bobbin thread for your machine. If you don't have an embroidery machine, then you just look for uh, bobbin weight thread and and anything will work. It's generally a 60 weight thread. It's just a finer thread. This thread is all going to stay on the bottom and it's not going to creep to the top. So it allows us to switch colors when we're doing that free motion thread painting and not have to worry about changing our bobbin. We don't care what it looks like on the on the wrong side. But do make sure you use a good quality um, bobbin thread. Again, you know, check out Sewing Machines Plus and get their um, recommendations on that because uh, good quality bobbin thread makes all the difference in the world. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch over. Give me just a second here. I don't know, Kennedy, if you want to come back on for just a minute while I switch over to my other um, workstation and, and my machine, you can do that. Absolutely. All right. Well, Joanne is switching over. Um, I just wanted to clarify. I got a, I saw a comment um, a little bit ago saying that 
um, I was talking about thread painting being a new technique. And I just wanted to say I meant that as we've never done that on the show before. Um, I know it's not a new technique and it's also known as tripunto and um, other things like that. But we've just never done something like this on the show. So I just thought we would show that. But what do you guys think so far? Let me know. I have already added my notes of things that I need to try. I have so much fabric that has um, prints on it and larger designs. So that makes me really excited of what I can do with that too. And I think she might be ready. So let's head back to Joanne and she is from the machine today. I am ready. Yes. Awesome. Everybody see me okay? Um, yes, we can. See my beautiful sewing machines plus man. Oh, I think yes. I will raise up my camera just a little bit here. It looks perfect. Everybody needs a mat, I'll tell you. Everybody <laughs> needs a mat. I love, 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 love that mat. So I've just got, again, any machine will work. I've just got my machine set up here for regular sewing with the regular extension bed on here. If you have an extension table that gives you a, a bigger surface for your machine, or if you're working in a cabinet, um, go ahead and use that that larger space. But I'm just going to use the um, the smaller space today. And I purposely did not put my foot on yet because I want to show you how to do that. So let me get in position here so I can do that. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to unscrew the foot that I have on along with the foot holder. And what I want you to see is that these types of feet have a bar on top. Whatever one you're using, it's going to have a bar on the top. And that bar is designed to rest on top of your needle bar screw. So that's very important. So I'm going to get in here and, oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to use this one today because this one is a low shank and this one is a high shank. So they do come in different shanks. You want to make sure uh, the one you have matches your machine. I could use this on a high shank machine, but I would need the adapter for it. I'm going to go ahead and use this one today. And that is really important to note because you need to have the, um, the proper height of the foot. So you can see that bar is resting right on top of the needle bar screw. And then, of course, I'm going to give it a good tightening down. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread just by sending my needle down and up. And I always like to start with that um, tail of thread. Again, we're not doing free motion quilting, so we don't need to bring that thread to the surface. We just need to, um, and we don't need to bring it to the surface of the fabric. We just need to bring it to the surface of the machine. I am set for a standard straight stitch. And then I have also lowered my feed dogs. So my feed dogs are no longer active. And I do that by pressing a button on the screen of my machine. But a lot of machines will have a lever generally in the back or maybe when you take your um, extension off, it may be in the front. Um, some machines, and, and this is possible um, for some, you know, that especially in the um, entry level machines, they will require you to cover your feed dogs. So you need to look in your manual and you need to find out what do I need to do to disengage those feed dogs because we are now what I like to call the mover and the shaker when we're doing the stitching. The feed dogs are doing nothing for us. So that means the stitch width doesn't matter and the stitch length doesn't matter. Now let's talk about thread colors. I just brought a little selection here. And of course, again, thread is um, kind of one of those beauties in the eye of the beholder type things. Um, but I like to try to pick up some of the colors that are in my motif and then um, pick something either a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. So again, if I just want that subtle effect, I'm going to go a little bit lighter. If I want um, a little bit more um, punch, a little bit more pop, then I'm going to go a little bit darker. So this is where you want to take your fabric to the store with you and then pick out your threads. And another tip that I know most of you know, but if you have trouble picking out colors, get to a window or somewhere where you can get um, outdoor natural light in order to pick your colors because everything will look different under different types of lighting. 
So I've already got mine just threaded with uh, beige. And I need to get my foot out from underneath my cabinet there. All right, and I am just going to start stitching. So I'm going to lower the presser foot, and that is really crucial because when you, I'm going to raise it up again just for a minute. When you see that foot is up, it may look a little like, you know, different than what you're used to looking at. So you want to make sure that you have lowered your presser foot and you are ready to go into stitching mode. And again, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to lower my needle just so that you can see that when you are doing work with a free motion foot, when your needle goes down, your foot goes up. When your foot goes up, or your first go, foot goes down, your needle goes up, okay? And it all happens just kind of uh, automatically. So again, all we're going to do here is just start moving backwards and forward. That is all there is to it. We're going to go at a relatively high pace as far as stitching. And of course, your speed is controlled not only by a speed lever on your machine, but also the pressure on your foot. I don't recommend using a start stop button when you're doing this technique because it's too much um, for your brain to think about and you may end up getting your finger in, in the wrong spot. But literally, I am just going backward and forward. It's kind of like coloring, but you're coloring with thread. And I usually like to do this relatively light the first time around. Just filling in that whole little belly area. Now in this particular case, because I'm going to be using this as an applique, I want to take care and uh, not color too much outside of the lines because I'm going to be trimming this very close in a few minutes and actually using that for my um, edging where I'm going to sew to my to my pillow top. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to um, tie off my thread and really tying off your thread isn't that critical in this because you're stitching on top of stitches that are already stitched. So in effect, you're you're back stitching. I'm going to cut that thread so you can see. And let me just hold that up to the camera so you can see what I've done so far. So just, a, like I said, a light fill. Now I will very often then take a, a thread that's a shade or two darker and do some more um, fill in area there and just keep adding more stitches until I'm happy with it. Once again, you can thread paint the entire motif if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna switch colors. And I'm just going to do a little bit of this lighter color here just to give that little birdie a little more accent. And again, always remember to raise your presser foot when you are threading your machine. Oh, thread a piece out of there. We are spoiled by our automatic needle threaders, but again, any machine will work for this. And I don't really have to bring up that, that thread again, but I like to um, bring up my bobbin thread, even though I've used the cutter, just to give me a little tail. I just think that keeps my um, understitching a little bit smoother, and I have less um, knots that form. And um, most of the time, we're not concerned with those, but the, the fact that I'm adding a lot of bulk here, I don't want to add too much more with, uh, with extra extra knots. Clip that thread. And think about this as if when you're doing um, animals in particular, um, you're kind of going with the the uh, the growth of the of the fur or the growth of the hair. If you go in in uh, straight directions, it's not going to be as pretty. So I'm I'm thinking you know feathers would be going down like this. So when I do this stitching now I'm going to be doing it almost like I would be adding feathers to that. And you're just going to smoothly go back and forth. Now, if you want to, you could consider putting quilting gloves on for this because it does help you kind of grip the fabric a little bit better. But 
when you're working on a um, relatively small piece, it's not as necessary. This is where you really appreciate your uh, sewing machines plus mat because you got a lot of vibration, and a lot of movement going on here. If you have anything loose on your table, make sure you secure it before you get started. Just back and forth, back and forth. Now, some people like to switch to a zigzag stitch to give a little bit more thickness to that. Um, I generally like to stick with a straight stitch because I think the zigzag stitch is a little bit more obvious and the straight stitch is a little bit more natural. Here I would just pivot a little bit, so again I'm following along that line of how the feathers would lay. All right, I'm going to stop with the fill in there. And I'm going to just switch to one more color. Just do a little bit more so that you can see how the um, accenting those existing colors really makes it uh, look natural. And you don't want to skip using that tearaway stabilizer because that is kind of the the secret sauce that makes everything nice and smooth while you're stitching. I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to add that little bit of aqua. Easy peasy so far, right? I am ready now to actually turn this into trapunto. So what's the next step? Well, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to remove most of my tear away. I don't have to be too fussy with this. You can see I used a different interfacing on this particular piece, but that's just what I happen to have on hand at the moment. Okay. Trim up my threads a little bit. And normally I would take this to the iron and give it a little bit of a little bit of a press. Okay. Um, just to, to smooth that out a little bit. What I want to do next is I want to trim. And again, remember that would be more thread painting on those areas. I'm going to trim about an eighth of an inch, maybe a scant eighth of an inch, which means a little bit less around my bird. That's one of the reasons we use the fusible interfacing is because that's going to help uh, support that fabric. Now, depending on your piece, you might have a lot of intricate details in here. And if you have intricate details, I am going to recommend you swirl right around those. Don't get too fussy with too many um, inside and outside points or you're going to drive yourself crazy. So for this, I'm just going to cut that part right off, go around that. Again, I'm just going to go around that part. And that beak would definitely be something I would want to um, add some thread painting there. Now, you know, if you like to do other embellishments, you could add cording, you could add beads. Uh, you could even actually paint on your fabric if you wanted to with um, fabric paints and accent that even further to give more depth to the color. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this would be my, my pillow top and I'm going to switch back to my regular sewing foot. And believe it or not, we've only got a couple more steps to go here. So back to my standard straight and zigzag foot. Go 
Always make sure you tighten your needle or your foot down with another little tug of your screwdriver there. All right, so I'm ready to place this on and turn this into a trapunto style thread painted applique. That's really the, the whole terminology there. I'm gonna switch to a thread that matches my applique as best as possible. Now, I know some of you are already thinking, could I use monofilament thread for this? Absolutely, you could. If you have a good quality monofilament that you like, go ahead and use it. I'm sometimes a little um, leery of using monofilament only because I don't always like the little bit of glimmer that it uh, shows up um, once it's stitched. But if you don't mind that look, then you know that it certainly will allow it to blend in nice, nice and easy. All right, so I'm gonna now need to zigzag all around this. So I'm just gonna pick, um, and I could use my applique foot. That actually would work even better, but I don't have it handy, I don't think. I don't think I do. Uh, nope, don't have that one handy, but that would be a better choice because it would have an open toe and I would have a clear view. So I'm gonna select just a standard zigzag. I'm gonna use a width of about three to three and a half. And I'm gonna use a length of about one and a half, one and 1 1.4, one, one and a half, um, generally right around there. And I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna look at my, uh, my bird and I'm gonna see where would be an easy place to stuff that. And when I look at that, I'm, I'm gonna look for whatever is a, a short straight area. I only need, I only need about an inch or two to, um, to actually do this, but um, that would be a good place for me to, to leave that open. So what that means is I'm gonna start just beyond there and then I'll end just short of there. So I'm gonna tie off the stitch and um, I need to make sure my feed dogs are back up. So I didn't do that. Make sure you don't make that mistake. And I'm just gonna pivot around. If you have pivot function on your machine, which I happen to have on this one, then every time I stop, my presser foot goes up while my needle goes down. That's very handy. But if you don't, then you just stop and lower your needle and you could raise your foot if you need to, and then you could pivot around much more easily. You can also taper your stitch a little bit when you start to get down to these more narrow points, but I'm not gonna bother doing that today. And as you can see, I'm doing this just on a little sample. Um, this is kind of your clue to, before you do this on your actual pillow, go ahead and just cut a motif out and play with it and get comfortable with the technique before you actually do it on an actual project. Now, let's talk about uh, just a, a tip or two for applique because that's what I'm doing. I'm appliquing this on. Again, if I had my clear view foot on, that would make it much easier. But when you're appliquing, you are almost always gonna be going around outside curves and then going around inside curves. Whenever you're going around an outside curve, you always wanna stop with your needle on the right hand side. So with a zigzag, it zigzags left, right, left, right. Whenever you're going around an outside curve, stop with your needle on the right and then pivot, even if it's only for a stitch or two. So I'm gonna stop with the needle on the right again and pivot. Take a stitch, stop with the needle on the right and pivot. I'm gonna do that as many times as I need to to get smoothly around that curve. If you don't stop on the right, you're gonna end up with stitches that have gaps. Now, as you get good at doing um, applique like this, you kind of end up just swirling around without even thinking about it. But when you're new to applique, that is one of my best tips for you. When we're pivoting around the inside now, like I'm doing, I'm stopping with my needle on the left. And then I'll take a stitch or two, stop. If I need to pivot, I can pivot. Okay, I'm going again around an inside curve. So I'm gonna pivot with that needle on the left. All right, 
I'm going to go ahead and tie that off. And if your machine doesn't have that tie off feature, you can just leave a tail of thread and you can overlap it or you can, uh, you know, pull your threads to the back and tie them off when you're done. But what I've done is I've left a little gap here. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my fluffy cluster stuffing and one more little tool. And that is some type of a uh, point presser so that I can actually get that pushed in. Uh, if all else fails, a uh, chopstick will do. And I'm just going to feed a little bit of that stuffing in. We're not trying to stuff the whole entire bird. We just want to give him a little bit of life with a little bit of stuffing. So I'll just push a little bit more in there and use whatever end you need. If you're trying to get into a point, you can use the pointed end. If you're just trying to smooth that in, you can use the rounded end for this. Don't, like I said, don't fill it too much. You know, you can always take out and you can always put in more before you close that up. But if you have too much, you're not gonna be able to flatten this out and stitch that open and close. So we're just about at the finish line. Again, I'm gonna tie off my stitch. And then just continue around until I get to the point where I started. Do another little tie off. And voila, we have a beautiful Trapunto bird ready to be part of my next pillow top. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch back over to Kennedy here and see what's going on in the chat. Joanne, I am obsessed with this technique. <laughs> it looked, you made it look so easy. Well, and I mean, you know, you'll never throw another scrap of home decor fabric away exactly. because yeah. you can use bits and pieces. In fact, I've even taken, you know, pieces from one print and put them onto another fabric yeah. and you could take leaves from, uh, you know, any fabric and add it to flowers yeah. from any other fabric or, you know, add My first birds thought, in, in a forest if you want to. Right, exactly. <laughs> my first thought was, um, some of my favorite fabric is kaif, kaif, um, yeah, basket yeah. fabric. Oh. And I was like, oh my gosh, you could cut out the flowers and. <laughs> I'm telling you, it, you know what? Isn't that the beauty of sewing? Oh my it, gosh. There's like nothing, nothing like it in the world. I like to no. you know, joke that I'm a sewing cheerleader because, um, well, for one thing, I wanted to be a cheerleader in junior high and I couldn't learn how to do the splits no matter how hard oh, I tried. So <laughs> me too. Me too. I had to become a sewing cheerleader. But, you know, yes. doing something even just that simple, again, it brings it brings sunshine into your yes. life. It brings joy. And a finished item like this. I mean, imagine whether you're doing it for yourself yeah. or you're doing it as a gift. Um, oh. you know, you're going to make somebody else have extra sunshine yeah. in their day too. Even just a way to practice. I mean, if someone's really trying to get into free motion quilting and learning that, that muscle memory, I feel like that's such a great way to get into it. Yeah, too. that's it's true. Just, because and it, the finish, oh, it's just, if you know. really want to do, and, and I, I don't, I didn't mean to sound negative at all on free motion quilting. It's just, for me, I came to a point where I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't care about doing this anymore, but if you really want to learn how to do free motion quilting, it absolutely can be done because it is a memory oh, skill. Yeah. And it's a yeah. lot like, I've always said, it's a lot like playing an instrument. If you're going to do it, you have to do it regularly. Whereas this exactly. is so like, this is like a no brainer. You can, yeah. you know, sit down and do it and anybody can do it. Kids can do it. Um, yeah. You know, just make sure they're, you know, they're keeping their finger away from the needle yes. and all that type of thing. But yes. that's all, you know, just takes a little common yeah. sense. No, I so. mean, I was looking, I'm thinking I have a giant bin of scrap fabric and, you know, pieces of fabric that might be too small for me to do anything with. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a print on there that I can yeah. cut out. So I'll have to try it and I'll, I'll send you a picture and I'll post it. Oh, I'd love to see it. it. I'll give it a try. I will. Absolutely. <laughs> and anybody here too, if you try the technique, you know, post a, Post your picture on uh, Sewing Machines Plus uh, yes. social sites and uh, tag me if you want to so that I get a chance to see it too. Yes. So I hope everybody enjoyed this because I had a lot of fun 
um, presenting it. And uh, it's always, always a wonderful day when I get to spend some time with you, Kennedy. <laughs> And the SNP Nation here because we oh, got lots it has of been, great friends here. Oh my gosh, it has been so much fun. I I've been sitting here this whole time watching you do this because not only is it very satisfying because you just you're so smooth with everything and just make it look so easy, but also this is something I could definitely do. You know, I always see like there's some techniques where I'm like, oh, I don't know, like maybe I'm not the best with straight lines or this or whatever the issues may be. And this I'm like, oh hey, this I can do. If you match the threads with the colors, you can, there's a lot of ways you can save, you know, the thread if it gets messed up. Extra texture there. See how with the blue, it's such a pop. Like people were saying, oh, I'd love to do with, with, do this with bright colors. But I mean, the little, it almost looks like watercolor. And that's why I love it so much. You can, you, it's whatever you like that. Again, that's the beauty of sewing. You go in a fabric shop. And, you know, I, I, I have friends that I love to go shopping with and they, yes. they'll, they'll gravitate to one corner and I'll <laughs> gravitate to another corner. And, you know, you just, you meet up at the end, you meet exactly. up and share. You know, and then we have fun. See, oh, what did you get? You know, oh, wow. Yes. You know? But everybody's, yes. everybody's got different tastes. So it's fun. Yes, fun. exactly. So please, Express if anybody's going to try this, <laughs> tag us. Cause I really want to see what you guys do with this. Cause I'm excited. I'm over here like, oh, I need to, I need to figure out, pull some fabrics and get started on this today. <laughs> You're going to have a lot of fun with it. You could just use it for some, I mean, I did a pillow, but you know, think about it. You could use this on, on tote bags. You could use it yeah. on, uh, you know, jean jacket bags. I, you know me, exactly. I could do a, I could do a whole show and tell on just, just embellishing your jean jackets, but yes. um, you know, <laughs> jean jackets are great for, for something like this too. And it's yeah, kind of, somebody's think... going to come up to you and they're going to want to touch it. You know, right. Like, exactly. <laughs> Somebody actually asked with your jean jacket that you're wearing today, what is that on your collar? What did you put on your collar? Uh, it's just a little uh, fringy beaded <gasps> stuff. Ooh. Yeah, it was just it was washable. So I yeah. always make sure I find washable trims and of course just add it's a little beautiful. This, Someone this commented little, and I was like, I want to know. <laughs> this is a little blast from the past, but I'll show you the back. <gasps> Oh my it's gosh. Let me put that on the first screen so you can um, see. An earlier brother design where oh, we had something. Well, we still, we, we have it currently today too, but this particular design was called print and stitch. Oh. And you printed it on printable fabric, fabric yeah. sheets, and then you embroidered over the top of it. So um, Ooh, I just, same you know. kind of a little bit, a little bit same, same feel for the technique. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Your ex, I didn't even think about that when I got yeah. got dressed. I just grabbed whatever jacket I could find quickest. <laughs> You're unintentionally on theme, which is great. <laughs> so All I hope right, everybody Jenny. enjoyed this. I really, um, like I said, I'm really appreciative for everybody hanging out here with us today. Oh, absolutely. I love it so much. And just thank you for sharing a little bit of your knowledge today. It has been so much fun to see you in this new technique. And I'm sure we are all after this are going to go try it and see what we can do with it. (laughs) Great. All right. Awesome. Well, if you guys want to see more of Joanne, all of her links are down in the description and I have been putting them in the chat below. So go check out letsgosew.com, her Facebook and YouTube. She has so much more amazing content. You guys don't even know. I look at it all the time and learn so much from her. So check it out and we can't wait to see what you create. I'm seeing some great ideas in here too. And isn't (laughs) that the other thing about it we you know we one spark lights another person's fire oh yes and i can see a lot of great great, a lot of great ideas coming through yes oh my gosh i'm so excited that's how you know it's been a successful show (laughs) that's great i'm so glad i love it all right joanne well we will see you so soon all right happy sewing (laughs) bye-bye all right you guys what did you think did you enjoy it because i loved it so much So let's go ahead and start with the next part of our show, which is drum roll. Giveaways. Okay. That was so loud. I I went so high, high pitched on that one. Okay. Let's see what we are going to be doing today. So let me get my wheel all greased up. Give me one second. I'm getting it all, all ready for you. Okay. All right. Our first giveaway today is going to be, because Joanne mentioned so mats, it was only fitting. I always do one on the show, but it's just every time I feel like we always learn how much we need them. And somebody commented while Joanne was on and said that they use, if you are still watching, comment down below, but that they turn their sewing mat upside down and 
use it upside down and it's easier for them to move their machine across. I had never thought of that before. And I love that. If you can find different ways to use one product, that is awesome. So good for you. I didn't know that really worked. So good to know. Thank you. All right. So we're going to give away one of our world famous SMP so mats. These are amazing. Caroline Marie. Yes, it was Caroline. I love that you did that. And I love that you shared that because I had no idea. I even told everybody here. I'm like, guys, we can, we need to add that to the features page. <laughs> Kyle said that we needed to add that to the website. So let's go ahead and see who is going to win today's so mat. All right. Are you ready? Let's spin. Dun, 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 dun. See, everybody's saying it's a good idea. I'm telling you, I'll have to try that. I've got one over where my machine is. We'll have to see. Joanne Hull, congratulations. You have just won a brand new SMP SOMAT. Now, if you go to smplive.tv, it's running across the screen right down below. You can go pick the size and the color that you want. So feel free to browse if there's a color that you like, or maybe you want to match um, the color to your machine or your brand. We've got um, brother blue so anything like that um, pick out your size and color let us know and we will get that shipped right out to you all right our next giveaway is going to be da -da 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 -da. I'm not very good at doing drum rolls <laughs> Kyle can you do a good drum roll oh the ring <laughs> see he does it better I don't know if you guys could hear that <laughs> Our next one is an SMP gift card worth $100. Yes. So if you saw any, Denise said not a bad drum roll, Kyle. Appreciate that, Denise. <laughs> She's a tambourine. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were looking at anything you wanted to stock up on, maybe the amazing Stay Perfect Stabilizer that Joanne was talking about today, they're so great. And we also have pre-cut sizes. So if you are a massive embroiderer and you kind of get tired of the rolls and you want something that's just flat and super easy to hoop, we do have pre-cut. So check those out as well. But this is $100 that you can use for whatever you want. So good luck, you guys. Let's see who is going to win. I'm spinning again. This is it, you guys. Da, 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 da. Okay. <gasps> Wolfgeist. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. You have just won a $100 gift card. Congratulations. I'm so excited for you. Okay. Wolfgeist, you know what to do. Go to smplive.tv, fill out the information for us, and we will send that to you via email. She said, yes. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. Congratulations. Um, okay. All right. I think I think one's not enough. I think I'm going to do one more and spin and see who's going to win because you guys were really excited over that. So let's see. One more. One more. Dun, 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 dun. Wendy Volrath, congratulations. You have just won a $100 gift card that you can go treat yourself with, go stock up on some, maybe some needles, maybe some... What else? Some patterns? I don't know. Whatever you want. It's up to you. Let me know what you're going to get. There we go. That's that's what we should say. All right. Well, congratulations to all of our amazing winners for winning some awesome prizes today. I can't wait to see what you guys get. And if you guys aren't in our Facebook group, join in so that way you can post pictures of all the things that you get with your gift card and the SOMAT. So how exciting. Oh my gosh, I love it. Everybody needs some SMP swag. When it comes to the SOMATs, I feel like they're just essential. Everybody just needs one. It's like a non-negotiable. So I'm just helping you guys out so you guys can all get one of your own. <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, that is going to conclude our episode today. I think, I think we're on episode 40, which is crazy. And Kyle said earlier that I'm doing – it just made me realize that I've been doing this for almost a year and just – that is just wild. It's really crazy. So thank you all so much for keeping it going and allowing me to do this for so long. It means so much. And the fact that we get to have such amazing guests like Joanne on the show, that's just, it's so awesome. And I'm so thankful and grateful that I've been able to do this. It's just, it's great. It's amazing. I can't even get over it. I'm just, the realization hits you sometimes. You're like, what? How is this possible? 
<laughs> All right. Well, tune in this Thursday for a super exciting episode with Blaine and over at SMP Live. Wolf Guy said a year already. I know. Isn't it crazy? Um, but yes, turn tune in. Tune in to SMP Live this Thursday for a really exciting episode with Belaine, and I will be there to say hi and hang out with you guys. So, yeah, tune in for that. Oh my gosh, I forgot to mention we have some really exciting shows going on with Blaine in the next coming weeks as well. Fabric Palooza. I know you guys saw some of my posts on Facebook talking about the in store Fabric Palooza, but do you really think, do you really think that we would forget about you guys? Fabric Palooza Part 2, the online shopping sensation, is back May 18th. So get excited, mark your calendars, set your alarms, maybe take a day off work. I don't know, it's going to be a big show. So I'm just recommending. You can say it's, I'll be Dr. Kennedy for the day and say that I wrote you out. I'll give you a doctor's note. <laughs> but definitely tune in. Um, super exciting. What else do we have? So we've got Fabric Palooza, oh my gosh, Hoop Fest, June 12th through the 16th. So many things and much more to come. Find us all on our social media. And again, go check out Joanne for more goodness and tips and techniques over on her website, Facebook, YouTube, and what else? I think that's it. And her website, just letsgoso.com. You'll find it all there. All right, you guys, I'm going to get out of here. And <laughs> Susie said, Dr. Kennedy, that I'm your girl. If you need a day off work, I'll be like, excuse me. We have a really serious case of fabric destashing that needs to be had. So she cannot come in today. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I promise. <laughs> and Blaine's birthday. Oh my gosh. I almost forgot Blaine's birthday. No, I didn't. May 11th, the big day. Tune in for Blaine's birthday bash. That's going to be a really good one. I promise. All right, guys, I'm done now. I will see you guys next Tuesday. Have an amazing rest of your day and week. I will see you guys behind the scenes on Thursday. And of course, this has been Takeover Tuesday. I hope you all enjoy. And I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.